HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll get you caught up with the latest Hiller sports highlights. We have a preview of this year's Hiller boys and girls track and field teams. We'll get you caught up with some of the latest town government news. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. On Wednesday, April 24th, the Hopkinton Women's Club hosts the 32nd annual Meet the Candidates Night at the HCAM Studios. Get a chance to ask this year's town election candidates questions. You can ask questions a number of ways, including attending the event or emailing questions prior to live at hcam.tv. Meet the Candidates Night starts at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, April 24th. On Saturday, April 27th, starting at 1.30 p.m., learn about the dangers of ticks at the Hopkinton Public Library. The event, sponsored by Friends of Whitehall, will host entomologist Larry Dapsis to discuss the dangers of ticks and answer questions from the public. Tick diseases are completely preventable. Come learn how on Saturday, April 27th, 1.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Library. On Monday, April 29th, EHOP hosts the seventh annual Know Your Vote program. The event will take place starting at 6.30 p.m at the Hopkinton High School Library. If you have a question about town meeting, this is a must-watch program. You may submit questions a number of ways, including attending the forum or in advance by email at knowyourvote at ehop.org. Find out more at ehop.org. On Wednesday, May 1st, HCAM will host the annual Town Election Contested Races Debate. The debates will start at 7 p.m. There are five contested races at this year's Town Election, including Board of Selectmen, Town Moderator, Commissioners of Parks and Recreation, Commissioners of Trust Funds, and a two-year term for the Planning Board. The debates will take place Wednesday, May 1st, 7 p.m. at the HCAM Studios on 77 Main Street. Find out more at hcam.tv. The Board of Selectmen recently approved three ballot questions for the 2019 annual town election. If, if the board is so inclined, we could move a motion uh, directing the town manager to forward the following three ballot questions to the town clerk's office. Uh, question number one, shall the town of Hopkinton be required to reduce the amount of real estate and personal property taxes to be assessed for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020 by an amount equal to 1,180,568? Question two, shall the town of Hopkinton be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase a ladder truck for the fire department. Question three. Shall the town of Hopkinton be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and one half so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase land for parking in the downtown 
or next to town hall. Okay. All right. The motion has. Um, would someone like to um, put that motion forward? So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? So if we do a, when, when's the last day that we can pull any one of these off? At this point, I don't believe the town will, or the board will have the ability to pull any one of these off. Instead, the board could move a motion at town meeting to take no action if there's, if there's an associated article Got with it. the question. Yeah. Yeah. However, as we have it, it, learned in the past, it, the state takes elections seriously. If you set a ballot question, it will be on the ballot. <laughs> But if it doesn't pass a town meeting, it doesn't matter at the ballot. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. All right. So these three ballot questions, which are just the motion has been made and seconded, we vote these. These are, these are going to be set on the ballot. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Right after our short break, we have Hiller baseball and softball highlights. You'll meet this year's boys and girls track and field teams. Plus, Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Need to find that special gift for an upcoming occasion? Come to the Framingham Rotary Club's Craft Fair on Saturday, April 21st. Browse the tables of over 100 crafters. This not-to-be-missed event will run from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Keefe Regional Tech High School, 750 Winter Street in Framingham. Get a head start on your spring shopping. You can find original art, handmade pottery, dyed silk scarves, clocks, original photography, leather goods, wooden boxes, and much, much more. All funds Rotary receives go toward grants to community and Metro West organizations that provide vital support and humanitarian services like the Boys and Girls Club, air conditioners for senior housing, student leadership programs, Special Olympics, and many more. Don't forget, Framingham Rotary's Craft Fair will be on Saturday, April 21st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Keefe Regional Tech High School, 750 Winter Street in Framingham on the main hallway on the first floor. This is a fully handicap accessible event for everyone in your family. There is no charge to attend. For more information, visit www.framinghamrotary.org or visit our Facebook page. Simply search Rotary Club of Framingham and please like it. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton Hiller track and field kicked off their season with a pair of wins. Here's a look at how things are going so far for the boys and girls track and field teams. Can you talk about uh, this year's team and what it's been like to work with this group so far? It's been great. This is my second year um, coaching this team and they, um, they've exceeded expectations this year. We had some big uh, graduations last year. Um, but the younger kids have really stepped up and the juniors and seniors have improved. We've, um, we're pretty strong across all events this year, which is really nice to see. Our throwers have really stepped up big time at the last meet um, against Westwood on Tuesday. Um, out of 27 points in the throws, we took 22 of them. So um, that was pretty cool. That was something we didn't have last year. So we, uh, we've enjoyed that and our distance and our sprints and hurdles and jumps have all been all been strong. So it's, it's fun to see, um, see everyone. Yeah. Strong in every event. It's, it's, uh, it's a nice balanced team. Yeah, so I'm the sprinter captain, so I'm in charge of the girls who run under the 400 meter. Um, so far, 400 meter and below, I help out with the jumpers and the hurdlers sometimes too. Um, I just like lead warm ups, um, help encourage, just lead the girls. I'm um, a distance captain, so I work mostly with the girls who are running 800 mile and 2 mile, and I'm a 2 miler myself, so I work with kind of those long distance people. Um, just leading warm-ups and helping out with workouts, that kind of thing. 
question. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to work with this group so far? Yeah, it's just been a really great group of girls this, this year. Um, we have a lot of variety in different skills, distances, um, jumps with everything. Everyone's really willing to put in work and work hard and encourage each other. And we've been dominating the TBL this year as we have in past years, and so far we're off to a really great start. Terrific. Abby? Um, yeah, pretty much everything that Ashley said. It's been great working with all these girls, and we have a ton of people coming out this year, and we're hoping to have a great season. Excellent. Uh, can you talk about how your meets have gone so far? Yeah, so we had our first meet against Medfield about two weeks ago, and that went really well. Um, it came close at the end, but we ended up sweeping triple jump in the end, which really helped us um, come out on top. Uh, Medfield's one of the harder, harder teams to beat, and then we had our meet against Westwood um, a week ago, and that went really well as well. Our throwing events especially were really strong against Westwood, and we've had a lot of strong performances across the board. Our next meet will be after April break, so in two weeks, against Ashland. Terrific. And um, can you talk a little bit about your uh, track and athletic experience here at Hopkinton High School? Yeah, um, I've really enjoyed track. I, I love it. I love the people that I've been allowed to meet. Um, you bring Track brings you together with a bunch of girls who you might not know otherwise without like the shared love of the sport. And it's just been a really great experience. You get to run with your friends, run with people you enjoy being around, and it's always fun. I've also been involved with um, cross country and swim. And between those three sports, I've really come to love the teams here and the sport. Just spending time with everyone and getting to train and compete together. It's wonderful. Uh, Coach, can you talk about the group you have this year and how they've been to work with? So they've been awesome to work with. Uh, this is my first year as the head coach, uh, but I've been an assistant coach here at Hopkinton High School uh, for the past five years. So I know a lot of these athletes and I know how hard they work. And uh, they're very charismatic, they're very energetic. And for the boys team especially, we're coming off of a, a TVL championship season. And I know that they're all really motivated to try to repeat that uh, this season. Can you talk about how your meets have gone so far? Uh, so far, we've had two awesome meets. Uh, the first meet, uh, we had a lot of young guys who uh, were being mentored and encouraged by our uh, older athletes. So we, we got a victory in the first meet uh, at Medfield. And then this past Tuesday, uh, it was pretty cold. Uh, it was raining. It was really dark. And we pulled out a good victory against Westwood. And we had guys stay all the way to the end of the meet to watch four uh, four by 400 meter relay teams run in the rain. And they were, they were awesome. Really fun to watch. Tremendous. Uh, could you talk about your uh, captains this year? Yeah, so I have, uh, as a first year coach, probably the best captain situation that I could have ever asked for. Uh, the four young men that we have leading the team, uh, Ben and Garrett Powers, Dan Logan, um, yeah, and uh, Young Wang, just phenomenal, phenomenal people. I, I rely on them a lot to help me kind of administer the, a lot of the workouts and the drills that we do because as you can see, there's so many different athletes here. And Dan, Ben, Young, and Garrett have just been so incredibly helpful. But the more important thing is they're really encouraging to all of our young athletes. They take the time to introduce themselves to the younger athletes, to encourage them, to support them uh, through a lot of the struggles that they're going to go through as, as um, first-year athletes. Over school break, we had a whole lot of Hiller softball and some baseball for you. Here's a look at the latest Hiller highlights. On Wednesday, April 10th, Hiller baseball took on Holliston. The Hillers led 2-1 heading into the bottom of the fifth and would add on to the lead. Line up and the pitch. There's a bunt. Slow roller, and it is picked up, throw to first. Not in time, everybody's safe, and a run scores. I think I called that. Did I not call that? Gets a piece of this one over to center field. It's caught. Simos going to tag from third. The throw in is not in time, and another Hiller's run scores. Four to one, heading to the bottom of the sixth, and the Hillers added some insurance runs. Out of West Point had his first home run. His Up ground the middle, ball. Glove by the shortstop, oh. throw home, and not in time. The run scores. Buddy McGuire comes around to make it 5 to 1 Hillers. Fan favorite. He'll get a piece of this one over to left field, and that gets down for a base hit. One run is in to score, and the lead runner behind him heading to third. He's safe as the ball will. End up over in the foul territory on the third base side. It's an RBI base hit for Bobby Pagliuca. 
The Hillers add five more insurance runs, and they take the game 9-1. to one. Hillers baseball then went on to beat Ashland and Barnstable, but fell in a road game to Bishop Fian. The Hillers are currently 3-1 and one on the season. Hillers softball started off their season with a 25-5 Mercy win over Holliston on April 10th. The next day, the scoring continued against Dover Sherborne. Hillers entered the bottom of the third, leading 4 to nothing. The Hatter deals. And this is up the middle, past the reach of everybody. One run is around. Here comes Whalen, and she will score easily. It's 7 0 Hillers. A two RBI single for Katie Holly. For the Hillers, three more runs come around so far this inning as this is driven over to left field to the wall see you later home run Jillian Cedia a three run blast and it's 10 nothing Hillers she doesn't need a pinch runner for this that's her first of five I said this year a moonshot by Jillian Cedia and the Hillers have broken this game wide open Six runs came across to score in the inning. The Hillers added six more in the bottom of the fourth and took the five-inning Mercy 16-1. to The next day, the Hillers took down Ashland on the road 10-3. On April 16th, the Hillers hosted Lincoln Sudbury and fell in 10 innings 5-4. On April 17th, the Hillers took on Milford. Top of the fourth, Hillers leading 3-1. to one. Center fielder Katie Holly made an unbelievable play. And this is ripped into center field, but caught by Katie Holly. And that is going to be out number one. Carly out Ferreira is going to be thrown out as well. What a throw from Holly to get it over to Morse at first base. And they caught Ferreira off guard for that's, the double play. heads up. What a missile. Katie Holly doubles up the Scarlet Hawks. The next hitter struck out, and the Hillers would rally in the bottom of the fourth. Swing delivers, and this is hit in the air. Past the reach of the shortstop, here comes Katie Holly. It's a 4-1 game, an RBI single for Alyssa McIntyre. Full count pitch, and this is ripped into center. Failed past the reach of the center fielder. I think it went off her glove. Here comes Alyssa McIntyre. It's a 5-1 game. Another ribby for Juliana Cedia. The Hillers added three runs in the inning and would end up taking the game in a six-inning mercy, 13-1. Hopkinton Hillers softball currently stands at four wins and one loss on the season. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, April 19th at 5 p.m., local artists, poets, and musicians gather to share their work in a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Your hair is blowing in the breeze. I can almost feel you by my side. On Monday, April 22nd at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, April 23rd at 5.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, April 24th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Women's Club introduces us to our candidates for office in the upcoming town elections in the 2019 Meet the Candidates Night. And at 7 p.m. on HCAM Ed, Elmwood School welcomes the Kenyan Runners in the 2019 Scholars and Stars Ceremony. And also at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Appropriations Committee meeting will air live on YouTube. On Thursday, April 25th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, 
The Hillers girls lacrosse versus Mansfield game and the Hillers softball versus Milford game will air. If you want to know more about all of HKM's shows before they air, then head over to hkm.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HKM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HKM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. John Hancock once again brought some elite Kenyan runners to visit Elmwood with the Scholars and Stars program. As always, the students had a great time and enjoyed meeting some of the elite Kenyan athletes. <laughs> and you can just walk around. So we put water in it. So for carrying. And then this is for this is now for people who are leaders. Leaders. Like if you. If you're chosen in your community to be a leader, they give you something like this. And then you go around, you talk with it. So there was a president, Moi. Yeah, Moi. Moi used, yeah, he was more president of Kenya. He used to talk to this. Did you have a good time? Yeah. How do you like meeting all the runners? Awesome, kind of. Do you have a favorite runner? John uh, How come? Because we won the Boston Marathon and we made a poster. Mr. Keene's class, as always, showed off some of their wonderful studies of the Kenyan culture prior to the ceremony. How are you enjoying Elmwood today? Are you having a good time? Yes, it's fun. You know? uh, how do you like uh, meeting all the students and seeing all they did about uh, Kenya, all the hard work? And it's great. They're excited and uh, they're they're asking us a lot of questions about you know all the stuff that we have here, like what's the meaning of it. They want to know much about it, so it's really exciting to be here with them. Is this your first time here? It's my first time. She won it before. Excellent. Uh, are you uh, ready for the marathon on Monday? Yep. We are excited. Excellent. And um, hopefully the weather will be uh, better than last year. Yeah, that's what we are hoping. So we will see what happens. But no matter what, we have to race anyway. So we are excited for anything that comes on Monday. Yeah. You enjoy to see the students? I enjoy it. How do you like the hard work? And... Uh, I've seen everything that we have in Kenya. Uh, you, are, you, you have it in uh, USA. And I'm happy to, to meet to think such thing like this in this country because it is our culture to have it in Kenya. Some students also got a chance to run a couple laps with the athletes around the bus loop. Oh, I feel me.
we chose. No, it's uh, very motivating. The amount of work and uh, time they put into it is very encouraging. You know that people are st study about us, study about where we come from. So when you come here and run, we're just not any other skinny Kenyan running. But we, they personalize us and learn so much about us. And we, it's very surprising to know how much they know about each and every one of the athletes here today. Elmwood students made a donation to the Kenyan Children's Foundation. It's just amazing uh, to know that these kids come together, they sacrifice their, their money, their little money they get from their parents to be able to help other kids back in Kenya who cannot get what they have and they help them to get it. So this donation goes a long way. This gives a chance to kids to go to school in Kenya and be able to study and get the education that these kids are getting. I'm so excited and I'm so thankful to all those that have given to us this course. Good time today, Elmwood. Yes, good time today. How'd you like seeing the kids and all the artwork they did and all the studying about the Kenyan culture? Yeah, it's great. How do you say thank you and yeah, thank you? Terrific. Yes. Was this your uh, first time here, Kenneth? Yeah, first time here. Excellent, you're going to be back? Yeah, I'm back. I'll be back soon. Maybe next time I'll be back again here in Boston. I like it so much. It's a nice place. Very nice environment. Yeah. Alright, terrific. We wish you the best of luck on Monday, Thank you. Guys. Thank you. See you. You can view the entire Kenyan Day ceremony on our website, hcam.tv. Hillers Boys Lacrosse opened their season in Holliston. Zach Frank tied things up at one apiece with 6.01 left to go in the first quarter. There's a shot and a goal for the Hillers. Zach Frank firing it in, the senior. 3.20 left, Jake Weinstock strikes to make it a 2-2 game. And that is going to be a goal for the Hillers. Riley Del Ponte gave the Hillers a 3-2 lead with nine seconds left in the first. Second quarter, Connor Sullivan nets two goals within the first 61 seconds to make it 5-2 Hillers. Later on in the quarter, Dylan McBride nets a goal for Hopkinton to make it a 6-3 game. And now Sullivan. And Sullivan rips it in. All kinds of mustard on that one. 7-3 Hillers. At 2.20 left, Riley DePonte made it an 8-4 game. Then less than a minute later, Jake Weinstock.